Mark Acklam was convincing, charming and a liar. He made Carolyn Woods from Gloucestershire believe he loved her, but then he talked her into giving him almost £300,000. He told her he was a Swiss banker and also an MI6 agent. In 2012, he put her up in a luxury house in Bath while he was living a few miles away with his wife and children. But in fact, he was a serial fraudster who'd been convicted here and abroad. A life of lies that began when he was only a teenager. The man that I had fallen in love with, who was a very noble, um, uh, honourable person, of course, was just a creation of Mark Acklam. That, that the person I fell in love with never existed. After conning Carolyn Woods, he fled to Spain. He was eventually arrested in Switzerland and extradited to the UK. Today, he was jailed for five years and eight months after pleading guilty to five charges. Carolyn Woods said he'd acted deliberately, isolating her from her family and leaving her in complete financial ruin. But she wasn't the only person in the West who fell for his lies. Martin Jones has spent years following the story. Many people who met Mark Acklam tell similar stories. Outrageous lies, working for nothing and losing their money. But how was he able to convince so many people to believe him? Chris Frampton is a technology entrepreneur. He invested £50,000 in a business idea with Acklam after meeting him in Bristol. The plan was to put on concerts at Formula One events on race days. He did make um, outrageous claims about how much money the business would make. Um, he had this thing about um, that he would get people to get involved in, in his projects because he would play on people's greed. He did say that I would be on a, a good salary, um, which was around about £20,000 a month. Acklam claimed he was a personal friend of Formula One boss Bernie Eccleston, but of course had no connection to him or Formula One whatsoever. And Chris lost his life savings. It was absolutely devastating because it was our safety net. It basically what we were paying the mortgage with, um, it was what we were living on, um, so we ended up losing the car, the house and all of our safety net. So we, we ended up living hand to mouth and after we lost, lost everything, um, it destroyed my family as well. But understanding people's hopes and dreams was a consistent strategy. This woman, Faye Jarvis from Bristol, still finds it all too difficult to speak about. Mark Acklam told her he could launch her modelling career. He took photos of her, he gave her a contract and he took her to meetings. He promised her £50,000, but she never got a penny. She didn't even get the photos he took. Though usually Mark Acklam targeted those with money. He was often seen here at Cotswold Airport because aviation attracts the rich. Mark Acklam often used to bring people here as a way to impress them and as a way of boasting about his wealth and about his influence, he'd often tell people he owned the whole of the airport, which the real owner assures me he definitely didn't. But crafting an image of being one of the super rich was a consistent tactic. Architect David Hadfield narrowly avoided losing his house in Bath to Mark Acklam. He promised him millions for it if he put it into an offshore trust. He told me that he was, he was Mark Moss and that he was, um, he was a Swiss banker. He owned his own Swiss bank. And he immediately said, oh, I said, I, I have a private jet, which I fly myself, you know. I discovered a little while later that he'd introduced himself to the next-door neighbour, Zach Moss, who was a paediatric brain surgeon. Though David is one of the lucky ones. He saw through the lies just in time. Others weren't so fortunate. There's a network of designers, printers and web programmers all around the West who worked for Acklam but were never paid. He ordered £50,000 worth of work from Stuart Gallimore and Acklam went to great lengths to convince him he was legit. Lots of other people were taken in by him and the fact that he went around with a crowd of important people who were traceable, you know, there were people with TV companies, there were PR companies, all these people, it seemed like he had this massive base of people behind him. So many intelligent, professional people fell for Mark Acklam's lies, but they all tell the same story of an accomplished con man who carefully targeted, understood and flattered his victims and who caused misery around the West Country. Martin Jones, BBC Points West. Somebody